<laughs> mm, my dear Boris, it's Walpurgis night. That's right, it's that time of season when we're halfway to Halloween. It's our time when we plant our pumpkin seeds, do our magics, ring our circles, jump our bonfires. <laughs> Welcome, dear ones. Welcome to Monster Movie Night. I'm your creepy old curator of Gargoyle Manor of the Monster Museum and your humbly horrible host. <laughs> Along with my co-host and co-companion of the museum, Boris T. Buzzard. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, you caught us whipping up a concoction for tonight is Walpurgis. <laughs> <laughs> the time of year when, when the spirits of the dead are restless once again, those also those spirits of uh, down below, that's right, demons and restless spirits and creatures of the night, such as, well, vampires and werewolves, <laughs> and it's the night where witches jump bonfires and do magics for the spring to come and the winter to say goodbye to. <laughs> Tonight's feature is in honor of this particular occasion. Uh, tonight's feature is, well, it's called The Daughter of Dr. Jekyll. Now, you wait a moment, you may wonder, what does that have to do with Walpurgis Night? Well, you will see once we get into the film that this particular uh, rendition has a little bit of everything. I mean, they've, uh, well, V werewolves, vampires, uh, sorcerers, mad scientists, a little bit of everything for this auspicious occasion. <laughs> so, I tell you what, while I'm mixing my brew <laughs> and concoction in honor of, well, Dr. Jekyll's daughter, let us go to the daughter of Dr. Jekyll through the uh, haunted internet TV. But first, let us uh, summon it up on the uh, old keyboard here. Daughter of Dr. Jekyll, starring John Agar and Gloria Talbot. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Let us tune in now, my dear fiends, shan't we? <laughs> Masterpieces of science and horror is Robert Louis Stevenson's immortal Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The thought provoking story of how a strange experiment transforms a benevolent doctor into Mr. Hyde, a human werewolf. When the news of the death of this monster came, there was a nationwide sigh of relief. No longer would the sound of every strange footstep mean terror evil thing would never prowl the dark again. Are you sure?
my guardian lived in such style. Downright cozy. I'll get the luggage. This is Dr. Lomas's, isn't it? I'm Janet Smith. I'm sure the doctor is expecting me. You're Janet. The doctor has talked about you so much. Welcome home, my dear. This is Mr. Hastings. I'm afraid the doctor didn't expect him, but I took the liberty of inviting him. Oh, now, don't tell me. Why, what a surprise this will be for the doctor. Come in. Come in. I'm Mrs. Merchant, the housekeeper. Jacob, bring the bags in. You know where Miss Smith goes and put Mr. Hastings in the blue room. Friendly looking little fella. Now hurry up, dear. I'm hungry. All right, darling. I'm just hanging up your things, miss. Is that all right? Thank you. You're Maggie, aren't you? Yes, miss. Do you want to change? The bath is that door. Oh, yes, thank you. Maggie, will you help me? Oh, yes, miss. Well, thank you. I'll finish. Oh, oh what, what happened? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right, Maggie. Take your time unpacking. Oh, it isn't that, Miss. It's just very late. The moon will be rising any minute now. The moon will be rising? What does the moon have to do with anything? Before I came to work in the manor house, I promised Mother I would always be home before the moon rose. Do you mean you walk home to the village every night? Yes, Miss. Why don't you sleep here? Oh, I wouldn't dare. Sleep here? Nobody in the village would. Why not? Well, now, Maggie, why on earth do you object to sleeping here? I'm sorry, Miss Janet. Mrs. Merchant said she didn't want any more foolish gossip. Come on, Janet. I'm coming. Well, Maggie, we can straighten this up in the morning. You may go now. Oh, thank you, miss.
Miss Merchant, I can't get over the behavior of that girl. You mean your maid, Maggie? Yes. Oh, there's no understanding these village people. They're shockingly backward. She was absolutely terrified. I've never seen anything like it before. Yes, what is this business about the moon rising? Oh, it's a lot of local nonsense. Really, I must apologize for that silly girl. You'd be shocked if you knew some of the superstitions of our little village. And the doctor, what's he got to say about all this? Oh, well, the doctor wants none of this. He's too busy working night and day with his patients. Why, he wouldn't listen to silly stories. What are these stories? Oh, they go back a long way. Now, mind you, I'm not a local woman. I come from near Liverpool. Oh, my, there's the doctor. Well, I guess it's near midnight, so I'd better go and take care of the champagne. Janet, my dear. Doctor. Doctor, this is George Hastings, who came along to celebrate my 21st birthday with me. And this is my guardian, Dr. Lomas. Glad to meet you, sir. How do you do? I know you two will like one another. You have to. You see, George and I are going to be married. Married? I imagine that comes as quite a surprise to you, sir. Surprise? <laughs> yes, rather. Come, we'll go into the sitting room. Children. One moment they are little girls playing with dolls, and the next they're introducing strangers as their future husbands. We didn't ourselves know until last week. Oh, Janet, my dear, your life was planned with so much loving care. I cannot help feeling I should have been consulted before this decision. Oh, we kept our engagement a secret from everyone until we could tell you. Young man, I consider you in this instance as rash and ill-advised as Miss Smith. She's an orphan. That's just it, sir. Dr. Loomis, I owe you so much, and I don't want to sound ungrateful, but even if you don't approve of George... I... What Janet is trying to say is, we didn't come here just to celebrate her birthday, nor for that matter, to tell you we're getting married. There's another reason. Such as? After Janet and I are married, we're not going to accept one penny from you. Is that a fact, Janet? Yes. And George and I hope you will always allow us to consider you our good friend. But we have agreed never to use any of your money. My money? <laughs> All the money I have, my dear, that was what I can scrape together from my medical practice. Now it's my turn to spring a surprise on you two. You, Janet, were never living lavishly on my money, but on your own. You, my dear, are an heiress to an estate and a sizable fortune. This house and the land around it for miles belongs to you. Although your father's will provides that I may live here for the rest of my days. Are you serious? Oh, money is never a joking matter, my dear. That's a point rich and poor agree on. What about you, Mr. Hastings? Well, I must admit, I have no objections to money. I'll try to accustom myself to it. I suppose you wonder why I haven't told you this before. Well, I've seen money spoil so many young lives. And I wanted to make sure that your future husband would be interested in you and not your money. I'm very happy for you both. Oh, almost midnight. Paul Mass. This was laid away, my dear, the day you were born. Well, now, don't expect a speech from me. Happy birthday, Janet, dear. May life be sweet and happy for you and for those you love. Thank you. Happy birthday, darling. Oh, it's nothing, my dear. Here, take mine. A broken glass means good luck. Of course, so it does. Well, so it did, didn't it? And you know, it's odd, Doctor. I was a little frightened of what you were going to tell us. I'm afraid, my dear, there's something more that I must tell you. What do you mean? Well, I'm duty-bound by an old promise to reveal to you certain facts on your 21st birthday. I'll explain in the morning. In the morning? Yes, why can't you tell us now? I'd rather leave it until tomorrow. You see, it's an old story, and another couple of hours can't make any difference. Besides, I, I, I'm very tired, and... And I have to go over some old documents just to refresh my memory. And now, my dear, and you, young man, you finish the champagne. And if you'll permit me, I'll go to bed.
Ah, my beautiful bride to be. All this and money, too. Before breakfast. Say, how about my getting some bacon and eggs for you? Mrs. Merchant went to town to do her marketing. Oh, it sounds fine. That bacon looks good. You know, George, I can't seem to get a bit of gossip out of Maggie. Every time I bring up the subject of the man and the moon or whatever was bothering her last night, I, she just freezes up like a clam and cleans faster. I'll bet I know the grim facts the doctor intended to tell you today. He was going to tell you about the taxes and the servant problems involved in this house. And I bet they're grim facts. Do you want to help me explore it? You know, this is the first house I've ever owned. Not on an empty stomach. Is food the most important thing in your life? Napoleon said a man travels on his stomach. What's good enough for Napoleon is good enough for Hastings. I found something curious. I've been taking the dimensions of this room. There's a large space unaccounted for, even allowing for the thickness of the walls. A secret room? Oh, George, really? Oh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. This is a very old house. I wouldn't be surprised if this house didn't date back to medieval times, at least of the Tudor period. And in those days, no self-respecting house was complete without a secret room and secret passages. Where do you think it might be? Well, if I'm right, it's somewhere in this wall. You know what I hope we find? Treasure? No. A bathroom with enough real hot water in it for a good shower. I give up. Whatever the secret, it isn't in this room. What did you do? Looks as if it could have been used for some kind of chemical laboratory at one time. Look at the dust. It hasn't been used for years. <clears throat> oh, I'm afraid we've allowed our curiosity to overcome our good manners. This room is no great secret, though it has a certain interest, and it has been written up in several of the local chronicles. Tell us about it. There's not much to tell. Some old legends. It's supposed to have been used as a hiding place for Jesuits at the time that they were forbidden in England. Why all this equipment? Janet, your father used this room as his laboratory. It hasn't been used since his death. My father? I have to tell you why I insisted that you'd come here for your 21st birthday. George, and I speak to Janet alone. Oh, but doctor, I want George to hear whatever you have to say. I understand. But if I'm to keep my word to your father, a word which I gave him before you were born, my dear, you must hear this alone. Then, if you still wish to tell George... George, I can't marry you. 
What on earth are you talking about? You must go. Go? And forget me. But why are you talking like this? What have I done? You love me? Oh, yes. Please don't ask me anything. Just go. No. You love me. We're going to be married. I can't marry you. Look, darling, there, there must be a reason. Now tell me why. Don't ask me. Janet, I want to help you, but I can't unless you trust me. Look, Dr. Lomas, I've had enough mysteries. Now I want some answers. What's the matter with Janet? This is your secret. Do you want me to tell? Perhaps it's for the best. She'll come with me. to the family, too. Janet's family. It predates the house by centuries. centuries of the family of Jekyll. Knights, soldiers, priests. He's here? Dr. Henry Jekyll. He knoweth not what he did. May his tortured soul rest in peace. Amen. Not the Dr. Jekyll. He was my father. You have to understand, a finer man than Dr. Jekyll never lived. We were medical students together. I was the dull plodder. But Jekyll was brilliant, with a mind approaching genius. He was independently wealthy. He did some really distinguished work. In the world of science, he was rated as one of the coming men. Then, then he became completely absorbed in a strange experiment. He practically withdrew from the world, gave up what practice he had, and forgot his friends. But Janet, always remember this. Your father's experiment in the early stages was intended as a blessing. See, his theory was that all men are part evil and part good. And his desire was to separate these personalities. Wasn't that close to a man trying to be God? Certainly. He developed certain drugs that had a most remarkable effect on the mind and body of a human being. Formulas which he destroyed before his death. As a result of using himself as a guinea pig in this experiment, battle within his own body and soul reached a climax. And hide one up. His mind would blank out when the vicious hide took over. Then when he reverted to the respectable Dr. Jekyll, his recollection of what Hyde had done was nothing but a vague, distorted nightmare. He wasn't even aware that physically he'd become a monster. Oh, I still shudder when I recall that face, like some perverted mask of evil out of a legend of horror. Then, then you saw him as high? Once, at the very last, 
just before the mob caught him. I swear to you, Janet, he never was aware of what he had done. You were hardly more than a child at the time. You were too young to remember. No, I, I remember. There, there was something in the papers about it. Mm. The press, press had a Roman holiday. You know, when the mob finally caught up with them, they almost tore him to pieces. The villagers broke into this tomb and drove a stake through his heart. The only safeguard, according to ancient tales of witchcraft, that keeps a werewolf from rising out of the grave when the moon is full to hunt for human blood. Now you know why I can't marry. I'm his daughter. Why, you little idiot. If you think I'm going to let an old wives' tale that happened 20 years ago. Suppose I pass it on to my children. Why should it be hereditary? Doctor, what should I do? I have absolutely no proof that this madness is hereditary. On the other hand, if I'm to be honest, I have no proof that it isn't. That's good enough for me. Let's get out of here. I must keep this gate locked. Around here, they still believe that Dr. Jekyll, in the form of a werewolf, prowls thirsting for blood every time the full moon rises. Every chance accident, every unexplained disappearance of man or beast is rumored to be his doing. Mm, Boris, my evilness, this man, Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as well as Treasure Island, had such a way about the words, you know, he could scarify a person. In fact, it was said that his wife read the first draft of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, this particular tome right here. She read the first draft and made him burn it. It was so horrible and scary that she couldn't take it. So he did and wrote this wonderful classic, Dr. Jekyll or the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> and so many films and adaptations have been made from this particular tome, uh, including tonight's feature film, The Daughter of Dr. Jekyll. Uh, in honor of that as well, we have the, we have, well, the Aurora model kit. As you can see, this is, uh, well, our Aurora model rendition of Dr. Jekyll becoming Mr. Hyde. And you can see all his wonderful apparatus and experimental uh, accoutrements. And you can see, if a little closer here, you can see, oh yes, he's changing quite well. <laughs> he's already broken up his chair, and he, he does have such a volatile way. The Aurora Models kits came out oh, in the 60s, I believe it were. Uh, in fact, I think it was 1960 or 61. And then, of course, they just snowballed up until the 70s. And that's when I came about and started collecting. Uh, well, I had started collecting way before then, but that's when I came across the wonderful Aurora model kits and this one particular is one of my favorites dr jekyll is mr hyde <laughs> so anyway that's enough of our mini museum masterpieces let's go back to the night's feature shall we
I'm fed up with these old wives' tales. They're utter nonsense. I understand. I know how you feel. The atmosphere of this place would get anybody down. After what the doctor said. Forget the doctor. Oh, the old boy means well. But the sooner we're out of here and married, the better. George, I know you're right, but I can't make any... Not disturbing anything, am I? Oh, young lady, what you need is a good night's rest. I think you must let the doctor prescribe. Maggie? I want you to go downstairs and heat up a glass of milk for Miss Janet. Yes, sir. Now, you say good night, but make it quick. First thing in the morning, we pack. Second, the minister. Had I not taken that bitter duty upon myself, You'd have stumbled on the truth sooner or later. The shock might have been worse. I don't know. Maybe I was wrong. What does it matter? Oh, my dear, you mustn't try to fight this so hard. Look at me. Look into my eyes. I'm going to check your nerve reflexes. Watch the light. Watch the light closely. I'm sorry to take so long, sir, but the fire got out in the stove and I had to get it started and... Is she all right? She's just tired. She'll be fine in the morning, won't she, dear? I'm going to have a nice long sleep. Yeah. Drink your milk. better tomorrow. Yes, much better. See that she gets right to bed. Yes, sir. up before I'm home, and only 24 hours before full moon. Full moon? That's when the monster Jekyll rises from his tomb.
Janet, Janet, it's all right. <laughs> Quiet, darling. I've been having a nightmare. Isn't Maggie all right? She's home. Home? Yes, she left hours ago. Maggie's in bed asleep by now. Are you sure? Why do you keep asking about Maggie? Oh, oh I saw something in a nightmare. I... It's all right now. <laughs> Let's try and get some sleep. This is going to put you to sleep. Go on. Drink it. You're all right now. I want to get Janet out of here today. Do you think she will really be in condition to travel? Well, it'll be rough on her, but not half as rough as staying here. Every time she looks out of her bedroom window, she's liable to go into another set of hysterics. And I don't blame her. The only thing I can think of is to get her out of here in a hurry. I suppose you're right. I blame myself for telling her about her father, but at the time... Good morning, dear. You've been keeping a nice hot breakfast waiting for Miss Janet, eh? Yes, indeed I have, sir. Sausages and eggs. Now, they always hit the spot, don't they? Now, my prescription is eat hearty. And after breakfast, we'll drive up to London after you've packed. I have an aunt who'll put you up until we can arrange for the wedding. I promise to be on hand to throw rice. How does that suit you? I'm sorry, George. I can't make a decision. I'm not capable of it. Oh, I'm sorry to be late. But the first batch of toast got burnt. Just seems to be one of those mornings when nothing goes right. First, Jacob didn't show up, and I had to start the stove all by myself. And then Maggie is late. Oh, this is going to be one of those days. I just know it is. Maggie isn't here? Oh, no, but what can you expect of maids these days? Why, in my first place, would I have caught it if I were ten seconds late? But now they come bouncing in as they like, without so much as a by your leave. like that. I don't know. There are no beasts of prey in this part of the country, not for centuries. Is there a circus or a zoo around here? What would have been in the times? There's no beast that did this. Leastwise, no natural beast. 
Only one thing did that. People around here know what it is. It's a werewolf. We've seen it before. Nonsense. Nonsense, is it? This isn't the first time we've had a monster around here. And people know what to do about werewolves. There's ways. That's enough. Get out! That's right. We've had enough of this nonsense. Get back to your work. Good day, Miss Jekyll. <laughs> Thing. How do you expect me to be getting dinner when you're two hours late with my chicken? <sighs> We've been drinking again. Just a pint of half and half. Who's to care? Oh, just a pint of half and half. Who's to care? Do you expect me to believe that one? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If Dr. Loomis finds you staggering about, he'll... Dr. Loomis. He's got troubles enough of his own to take care of. I'll tell you one thing. I've been talking to the boys down at the pub, and they don't intend to be putting up with no daughter of Dr. Jekyll roaming around. You'll mind your business if you know what's good for you. It is my business. It's everybody's business. First Maggie last night. Whose blood will she get tonight? What a wicked thing to say. Is it indeed? Well, let me tell you something else. Do you know what the lads are saying? They took care of the father, and they know how to take care of the daughter. You're just trying to stir up trouble with your wicked nonsense. So you think it's nonsense? Well, maybe. But I wonder who'll be next. Perhaps you. Now, don't worry. I'll be all right. You most certainly will, my dear. Here's the hot milk. I put some of our best brandy in. And I'm going to add another ingredient. How does that taste? All right. Drink it down. Ah, that's good. Now we'll all leave and let you get some rest. After you've had a good night's sleep, you'll feel like another girl. Sleep tight. Doctor, you have the key. Don't worry, my dear. I'll lock you in, snug and tight. Be sure. not to upset her. Oh, I wonder how much longer my nerves can stand this. A nightcap? No, uh, don't worry. I leave my door ajar. Doctors, you know, always sleep with one eye open. Good night. Good night, sir.
Janet. Janet. It happened again. I knew it would. Look at my hand. Janet, what have you done? Killed. Killed like some beast in the night. Janet, you were locked in. The doctor was watching the door every moment. Weren't you, doctor? I must have dropped off for a few moments, but nevertheless, Janet, tell us exactly what you think you did. I killed her. I, I crept up like some animal. And then I had my hands around her throat. Janet, be quiet. <laughs> now, you have to be sensible. This is all nerves. My nerves? Do my nerves explain the blood in my hands? In the mud on my shoes? In my gown? This is ridiculous. We're living in the 20th century. This is an age of reason, not superstition. Now, now let's look at this calmly. Everything you've shown me has a reasonable explanation. Look at your arm. That's where the blood came from. You scratched yourself and tore your gown during your nightmare. We went for a walk today. That explains the mud on your shoes. Now, Janet, all that is left are a few bad dreams. But I saw myself kill her as clearly as I see you now. Could I have been sleepwalking? Impossible. You were locked in. The doctor locked the door and kept the key. When you screamed, the door was still locked. I could have used the window. Quite impossible. Are you sure? Absolutely. Not even a trained acrobat could crawl along that ledge or drop to the ground without injury. See for yourself. What are you doing here, intruding at this hour? We found Lucy. Found Lucy? What do you mean? You know what I mean. We found Lucy with her throat torn out. Torn out by her. I've had enough of this. Some maniac has broken loose, but I'll not have Janet accused of these horrors. Here, get out of this house, and don't let me see you in these grounds again. We know you're the daughter of Dr. Jacob. We know what you're doing. You heard him. Get out. Let me tell you something. It won't be long till the daughter of Dr. Jacob joins her father in the vault with a stake in her heart. We know how to deal with werewolves. Hi, Mrs. Merchant. What are you going to at this hour? I'm leaving. Oh, now, Mrs. Merchant, this isn't like you. Leaving without notice after all these years? I'm sorry, but there isn't an argument in the world that could get me to stay in this house another moment, let alone another night. There are some things that nobody should be expected to put up with. Oh, now, Mrs. Merchant, this is silly, really. Pardon me. I'll send for the rest of my things later. I shouldn't be too long. If anybody wants to start any mischief, I intend to squelch it before it gets underway. Now I must go and see if I can dig up another housekeeper. Can't we get Janet out of here by tomorrow morning? I don't see why not. Those pills I gave her should keep her asleep for another few hours. She seems much better. But don't go up to her now. We don't want to give her the impression that she must be watched. Better get some rest yourself. And remember, in case Janet gets a bit out of hand, give her not more than two of the pills I left with you. No, I won't. And don't give them to her unless it's necessary. I don't like to use too many drugs if it can be avoided. Well, I'm off now. Goodbye.
you're supposed to be the soul. Sometimes of a dead body, sometimes of a human monster, which quits either the dead or sleeping body by night to suck the blood of living persons. Hence, when the werewolf's grave is opened, his corpse is found to be fresh and rosy from the blood which he has thus absorbed. To put a stop to its ravages, a stake is driven through the corpse, or the head cut off, or the heart torn out and the body burned. No. So you believe it? Of course not, Janet. Now, I want you to take some pills Dr. Lomas left for you. It's natural for you to be upset. Why don't you say it? I'm mad. You've got to do something. You've got to lock me up or put me in a madhouse. No. No, Jacob is right. He knows what to do. I've got to get a stake and drive it through my heart and bury me beside my father. Well, do it! Do I have to kill myself? If you love me, please kill me! Please kill me! Please kill me! Please. Stop it! Sorry I had to do that. Now, now I'll take you up to your room. Give you those pills, Dr. Lomas left. Make you sleep. I've got to get Janet out of here quick. I'm afraid you can't. More trouble? Yes, I've had trouble too, and I'm afraid there's going to be more. In the village? Jacob? Mm-hmm. But surely nobody's going to listen to his superstitious gossip. I'm afraid they already have. I've talked that idiot of a village constable out of swearing out a warrant for Janet. But tomorrow there's going to be a coroner's inquest. And ridiculous as it is, they intend to summon Janet as a witness. But she's in no condition to face an inquisition. As a physician, that's what I intend to tell the coroner. If they want her as a witness, they'll have to postpone the inquest. Unfortunately, it still means that she can't leave. Well, then there's no reason to tell her about this now. Right. Well, I'm going back upstairs to her. If you want me, I'll be in the dining room. I need a drink. She's gone. Are you sure? I looked all over the second floor. The third floor and the, and the attic are locked off. She must have come downstairs. You look upstairs again. I'll take this floor. Any luck? No. Where the devil can she have got to? She can't have been out of your sight for more than three or four minutes. I thought the pills put her to sleep. Oh, individual reactions differ sharply. Well, we can't waste any time. She was talking about suicide. Oh, lots of people do. Mostly it's just talk. Come, the next thing to do is to search the grounds. Oh, add just a little of this. I believe that was part of the recipe that Dr. Jekyll once told me about. <laughs> That's quite enough of that. And maybe just a little bit of this. And yeah, it gives it a little coloration. <laughs> Indeed. Now we'll take a little bit of from the old here, the old flask, and we'll add it here into this particular concoction. And now, ooh, 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 this is going to be so much fun. In honor of Dr. Jekyll's daughter and Dr. Jekyll himself, I'm going to attempt, my dear fiend, something that you may not have seen before anywhere. I'm going to recreate Dr. 
Mr. Jekyll's Mr. Hyde formula so I can turn into a grotesque, oh, something even more horrible than myself. <laughs> so let's see what happens. I'll add a little bit of this into this flask, this test tube here. Oh, yes, indeedy. There we go. Fill her up. Fill her up. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Look at that color. Ah. Now, let's stir it a little bit here with, with the mixture. Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, my. <laughs> anyway. Bottoms up, everyone. <laughs> Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh, oh dear, I, I feel so changed, oh dear me, I, I just feel so different, oh, I, I feel so light and airy and fluffy and oh dear what has this concoction i don't feel monstrous at all what's what's going on here let me take a look in the mirror of my oh my gracious me what's happened oh, 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 oh. what's happened to me it's uh, uh, that rotten Dr. Jekyll gave me the wrong formula. It's supposed to make me more ferocious and more monstrous, and now it's just made me more human, I guess you might could say in English, it would seem. Oh dear, oh dear, I've got to I've got to get back to concocting I've concocting this thing and so I can see if I can't reverse the effects. Oh dear, so I tell you what, let me take one more look. I don't think I can stand it. Oh, no, no, no. I've got to get back to this. I tell you what, let's go back to the film while I do some more mixing and reagenting here. We just got to get, I just, I can't stay like this. I can't, I can't at all. No, let's go back to the film, shall we? Why did you come here? Nothing made me. I'd be better off beside my father. Janet, you've permitted yourself to become completely morbid. You mustn't let these ridiculous superstitions get the best of you. The doctor's right. I know you're going through a nightmare, but you have to fight it. George, directly the inquest is over tomorrow, I want you to take Janet away from here. Inquest? Oh, I'll tell you about that later. George, take Janet back to the house. Didn't I order you off my grounds? It's no harm I'm doing. Now, let me make this very clear. If at any time in the future I find you on this land, I'll have the constable take you in charge for trespassing. This is strong, very strong. That young lady would put an elephant to sleep. I want to be completely unconscious, unable to move. Oh, you will be. I hope I'm not overdoing sedatives. They can have a nasty effect. I'll take the risk. Well, frankly, I feel like an idiot, but I've done what you've asked. All the windows are nailed shut. No one can get out? Not even a mosquito. 
Now, when you go, be sure to lock the door from the outside and keep the key. Oh, I'll do even better than that. To convince you how silly your idea is, I'll lock the door and I'll spend the night on that chair. No, I'll stay with her. Oh, no, you were up all last night. Two nights in a row aren't good. Besides, I've got about six months back numbers of medical journals to read. Off with you now. Now you're not going to have any more nightmares. Get a good sleep. Tomorrow will be off. Night, Princess. She's almost asleep. Mm, it's very strong. Now, on your way. And don't waste any sleep and worry. Tonight you will dream again. You are a werewolf. You will steal through the woods to a lonely house and kill a woman. Then you will cut yourself, rip your gown, and cover your face and hands with blood. With this cord, you will hang yourself over your father's grave in atonement. Now you will sleep. When you wake, you will obey.
is it? This is the telephone exchange. The constable has asked us to warn all subscribers that the killer is still at large. There is no need for panic, as the village men will be patrolling the woods. But it is thought advisable to bar your windows and doors. Hello? Are you there? Are you there? Please answer me. Darling, listen to me. He didn't do any of those killings. It was a doctor. A doctor? He's mad. Worse than that, he, he changes into something that isn't human. Oh, but I saw myself. No, no, he hypnotized you, put you in a trance. He made you see those things. But the blood on my hands. The doctor. Just as he gave you that cord to hang yourself and, and arouse Jacob's suspicions to stir up the village. But my father. He used Dr. Jekyll in his earlier killings to gain control of the estate. He was trying the same thing with you for the same reason. Oh, no. no man could possibly do that. We're not dealing with a man. We're not dealing with anything human. And if we don't get out of here quick, we won't be dealing with anything ever again. We've got one chance. Lie down here. Act like you're still in a trance.
never prowl at night again. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wall purchase night, oh, wall purchase night. Bring out the frights, bring out the frights. Mm, devilish hosts and vampires, werewolves, witches too, come and make your special brews. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful, wonderful film, The Daughter of Dr. Jekyll, on this most auspicious of nights, eh, Boris? <laughs> And oh my, what a transformation the uh, that fellow. I mean, of course they're you know calling uh, the doctor what's his face as the 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 buddy to Doctor Jekyll. Well, somebody he was you know? anyway taking the formula and turning into well they say a werewolf. I suppose I could see that, and of course. You know, him hypnotizing with his magical ways, that wonderful young lady, the daughter of Dr. Jekyll, making her think that she was, well, they kept saying a werewolf, but we know that it was a vampire, right, Boris? I mean, honestly, stake through the heart, coming out of the crypt. Okay, at least they had the full moon, right? <laughs> anyway. What a wonderful film. But don't you, don't you dare turn it off yet because tonight in honor of Walt Purges Night, we have a wonderful double feature. <laughs> Surprised you, didn't we, Boris? <laughs> That's right. Tonight we have, in honor of this suspicious night where witches, werewolves, warlocks, and vampires and ghouls and ghosts come about. Tonight we have M.R. James's whistle and they will come. Oh, what a scary tale it is. So sit back and get ready. Hi folks, I'm Rico. Oh, Nacho. He's Peppy. See. Si. You can find us at the concession stand in the lobby. Along with all sorts of other tasty goodies. See. Si. Rico's Nachos, a refreshingly new and different snack discovery. Chock full of high quality ingredients, crisp fresh tortilla chips, covered with creamy aged cheddar cheese, topped off with zesty jalapeno pepper rings. Rico's Nachos, out of sight. Remember folks, we're the new star at the snack bar. Rico's Nachos, a new taste treat you can't beat. See. Rico's Nachos, on sale at the snack bar now. <laughs> oh my dear Boris, well, that was wonderful. I mean, you have to get out the old Ouija board, especially a haunted Ouija board like this for a special film. M.R. James's whistle and they will come. <laughs> oh, indeed. What a film. You guys, you guys have got to stick around for this second feature that we have for this Wall Purges Nights double feature. <laughs> and I thought I would consult the Ouija board as well as, well, the old crystal ball eye as well. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But first, let us get into tonight's second feature for Wall Purges Night. M.R. James's whistle and they will come. First, let us key it in. That's right, whistle and they will come. M.R. James.
excellent. And now we shall tune in to the old haunted internet TV, shall we? <laughs> Let's go into it right now. Did your mama tell you not to turn on the TV at night? <laughs> <laughs> This is a tale of the supernatural. It's the work of a man who wrote ghost stories as a sideline. The author, M. R. James, was an archaeologist, medieval historian, and a great expert on the early history of the Bible. He was vice chancellor at Cambridge University during the First World War, and later became the provost of Eton, where he died in 1936. He's best known for his ghost stories, all of which have a peculiar atmosphere of cranky scholarship. The darkest of them is called Whistle and I'll Come to You. It's a story of solitude and terror, and it has a moral too. It hints at the dangers of intellectual pride and shows how a man's reason can be overthrown when he fails to acknowledge those forces inside himself which he simply cannot understand. Professor Tell? Yes, sir. Sure. All right, sir. Sure. Anybody there? Sign the registry? Oh, yes, 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 of course. Coming for the golf, I suppose. 
No, no, I, I'm afraid I don't play golf. Oh. Very much. <laughs> if at all. Uh, about my bag. I'll bring him in. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, thank you.
Turn down your bed, sir. Turn down the bed. Turn down the bed. Yeah. Uh, turn down the bed. I think a little, a little haddock. Come in, miss. Uh -huh. Quite sure you wouldn't care for a round after all, Professor? No, I don't think I will. I think I'll go for a good trudge hmm. around the district. Mm -hmm. Take a packed lunch, perhaps? Dunes, beach, and the cemetery. Oh, uh, a bit too spooky for me. Spooky. Is it? Mm. Spooky. <laughs>
Sehr gut.
Do you believe in ghosts, Professor? Ghosts? <laughs> That's rather a sticky one, isn't it? I'm not quite certain what you mean. I mean, I'm never quite certain what I mean, invited to believe when anybody asks me a question like that. I'm not even quite certain what I'm being invited to disbelieve when it comes to that. We're quite with you, old chap. No, well, well, I mean, you ask me, do I believe in, say, Australia? Well, now I know perfectly well what the sort of thing I'm being asked to judge. I mean, we all agree what we mean by Australia. <laughs> Large continent, southern hemisphere, discovered by Captain Cook. Four or five large cities, kangaroos, and so on and so on. And given that, given that, one can perfectly well imagine the sort of procedure that one might put in hand to confirm, or on the other hand, to disconfirm its existence. It's not quite the same thing with ghosts, you see? I mean, there's no broad consensus about what a ghost is, is there? You owe me a bit of a chime on that one. I think now, ghosts. Uh, the spirits of the dead. Uh, the, the, the survival of the human personality. Ah. Ah. Survival of the human personality. Hmm. Well, now, <coughs> that's a different question again, really. And uh, it has the grammatical appearance of a real question, but I wonder... Does it really, does it really mean anything either? Or mm, enjoy it? Well, well, let's see. We say, for the sake of argument, that the human personality survives death. Right? Right. Well, now, but would we say it in the same way that we might say, for example, that someone survived a train crash? No, but would we? Yes. Would we, you see? I mean, <clears throat> we say, don't we, that Pausanias survived the train crash but was very badly injured by it. Now, we wouldn't want to say that Pausanias survived death and was very badly injured by it. Would we? I mean, we wouldn't want to say that. Mm. Would we? No, no, no. Well, well, clearly here we have a, a logical difference of usage in that death, in a sense, is not like other physical catastrophes. I mean, one, one doesn't talk about anyone being very badly hurt by death. Oh, well. Except possibly the relatives of the deceased. <laughs> But never the victim himself, <laughs> excluding, of course, the, the, uh, the special interpretation in which one might say that he had been injured fatally <laughs> by death. <clears throat> or for that matter, that she had. <laughs> True. True. But there are more things in heaven and earth than in your philosophy. No, no. I prefer to put it a different way. There are more things in philosophy than are dreamt of in heaven and earth. <laughs> more things in heaven and earth. <laughs> Delicious breakfast. Crystal ball, crystal ball, tell us now what we need to know before the fall and when we plant our pumpkins now in the spring for Walpurgis night. Well, let us go. Tell us now. Well, well, what do we have here? Well, Bobby Gamonster and Boris. Bobby Gamonster and Boris. That's, that's it? <laughs> I, uh, what do you expect when you get your parts from a War, war Plus Navy store, you know? <laughs> anyway, what a wonderful film, eh, my dear fiends? M.R. James's Whistle and They Will Come.
become ghostly. Hmm? <laughs> and speaking of ghostlies, have you guys out there gotten your uh, your pumpkin seeds into the ground as of yet? Huh? Got your fingers all dirty, just like you were pushing up from a grave. <laughs> oh, from beneath the ground, grit and dirt up under the fingernails <laughs> right boris <laughs> i mean getting ready for that ghostly dance around the bonfire oh and then through oh my i just feel so cobwebby and tingly <laughs> don't you boris <laughs> yes indeed so let's go back to tonight's second feature of our Wall Purchase Night double feature, shall we? M.R. James's whistle, and they will come. No, 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 I, I don't think I would take on I don't know much. Well, I tell you what, um, I'll go to the way I go. Yeah. I'll show you. Um, oh, that's all good. Put me on my way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. in philosophy than I dreamt of in heaven and earth. Mm. Mm. There are more things in heaven and earth than I dreamt of in your philosophy.
this who is coming? Yes. Where shall I put the blanket, sir? Where? Well, which bed do you want it on, sir? Which bed? Which bed? Yes, my bed. Hmm? Well, my bed. Well, which is your bed, sir? You seem to have slept in them both. They're both rumpled. Both? But didn't you notice that both beds had been slept in, sir? <laughs> no, madam, I did not like them. I can't understand why you didn't notice it, sir. 
Perhaps you move from one bed to the other in the middle of the night. The habit of moving from one bed to the other in the middle of the night. Rumpled, it certainly is, yes. Rumpled. I've not been in my room since breakfast. Has anyone else got keys? Oh, it's only we two, sir, and yourself. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. If true, demonstrates mind without brain and intelligence disconnected from what is termed a material body. It demonstrates that the so called dead are still alive and that our friends are still with us, though unseen. The present article may be taken as a denial of these theses. And surely good. Is this who is coming?
What a great film, hey? What a great double feature, eh, hey, Boris? I mean, it was so wonderful being able to enjoy them with Boris and you out there as well. I tell you what, before we go, let's try one more time with the old uh, haunted crystal ball. Tell us something that we need to know, my dear fiends. Well, I wasn't trying to hide from you, and were you trying to hide from us, my dear fiends? I don't think so. After all, you know that we can find you it's right here for Monster Movie Night. <laughs> right, Boris? Anyway, my dear fiends, I hope you enjoyed being with us half as much as we enjoyed being with you. If so, then you have had a wonderful night. <laughs> you know, before we go again, I think we shall rate, since it's a double feature, I think we will rate it with four rubber duckies. That's right, four rubber duckies, one gigantic devil ducky, and one zombie ducky, and one... Vampire's Ducky and a special Count Dracula Ducky. <laughs> four duckies in all. And maybe even, for this special time, a Route 66 rubber chicken. Just for good measure, hey? Eh? <laughs> well, until next time, we'll see you in your dreams. And, as always... Keep screaming. <laughs>